so the patient experienced a partial response on fulfiri uh, bevacizumab, uh, and uh, 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 he had a scan, another scan at four months, and then six months showed continuous response. The CA was dropping, which was great news. Then a discussion ensued, and we placed the patient on maintenance capecitabine and bevacizumab. Uh, six months after initiating capecitabine and bevacizumab, the patient starts feeling uh, quite short of breath. Uh, another PET CT uh, scan was repeated and showed evidence of, in addition to uh, uh, worsening of his liver disease, uh, there was also uh, an appearance of new lesions in both lung fields that probably explain his uh, shortness of breath. At that time, we sat down and we discussed his options. One of his options was to restart irinotecan, but he was not interested anymore in, uh, intra, uh, in the antecan or the pump. At this point, we also discussed oxaliplatin and 5-FU, same, same limitations regarding uh, the pump. Uh, he also was very leery to proceed back with oxaliplatin because of his prior experience. Um, uh, then we uh, discussed that the fact that his tumor is on the right side, that the benefits of uh, uh, EGFR inhibitors may be questionable. In fact, we don't know whether they have much activity in the second line, lo and behold, in the third line and, uh, and beyond. And we discussed a little bit the results of a study that was uh, presented uh, uh, recently, the reverse study, uh, which essentially suggests that uh, uh, patients uh, may benefit from initi initiating rigorafenib sooner, uh, at least before uh, cetuximab, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and, and discussed this a little bit. We also discussed the results of uh, another study that looked at the dose escalation strategy with rigorafenib versus 160 milligrams, and we also discussed the data with TAS-102 and uh, it, its presence, and ultimately with all this, we decided it would make the most sense for the patient uh, 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 between our discussion and the patient's preference to proceed with rigorafenib at 80 milligram. With a dose escalating strategy uh, to 120 on 160 on a weekly basis, so we'd see the patient every week in the clinic in the first month and I'll escalate accordingly. Uh, so we started with 80, went to 120, and then uh, got to 160, and within uh, uh, a week after we got to 160, the patient experienced uh, significant hand and foot syndrome. Um, uh, great, I'd say grade two plus, maybe closer to grade three, so quite significant, uh, which we had to stop then uh, the rigorafenib uh, um, and held it for, uh, for a week in addition to the, uh, to the week break and then reinitiated after resolution of the, let's say, grade two hand and foot syndrome, uh, reinitiated the, the regorafenib at 120 milligrams, uh, and the patient seems to tolerate this well. Um, the first scan after initiating regorafenib showed evidence of stable disease, and his CAA started dropping.